I believe that I've uncovered evidence of an international slow cooker social media fraud slash conspiracy. This goes big, this goes all the way to the top. But first, I want to talk about some other stuff. I used to be the biggest social media internet addict, you know? Just posting every fucking day. Oh, you got to post every day. you got to post every day. you got to go in on Facebook and invite everyone to like your pages, reacted to shit. 2018, 2019, I was a fucking internet addict, you know? And I can just see that. Look at these oceans of shit. And you know, the timeline formula of social media platforms like Facebook, all of this is lost. You don't look that up. At least with YouTube, there was the slightest chance that you might be able to go back and look at old content. And people do do that, you know what I mean? I'll get messages from people sometimes like, holy shit, I've just been through years of your videos, I love it. You know, time consuming, but possible. It's not possible here. You can't find this stuff. It's just like a cratered surface of the moon. And every crater is a fucking sinkhole of validation that only lasted as a sugar rush for one day. And now it means nothing and all the effort just gone, pissed up the wall. But gradually I came to experience a combination of time, activist burnout, the realisation dawning upon me that every other fucking content creator or internet personality out there is secretly a fucking maniac, fucking nutter. So I just... I just faded, you know? Genuine danger from my political opponents. Whole range of stuff. Man, I tell you one place though that doesn't make me feel jaded, like a worn out fucking husk of a thing when I'm online though, is pages, boomer Facebook groups and pages, like the slow cooker Facebook groups. And trust me, I'm a member of quite a few of them. This is the beating heart of, of, of social media and the internet, in fact, for me. This is where, you know, life still reigns supreme. You know, messy, chaotic, domestic life. You know, people post in there and, you know, mums and dads respond with things like, mmm, yum, yum, delish, I'm gonna make that for hubby. You know, people go back in there in the comments the next day and then they report back on how much hubby loved the meal. This is where life reigns supreme. Come on, come on, look at this. It's taken a massive cult turn in New South Wales. Give me a good idea to put in the slow cooker for cult days and to prevent little ones getting the weather change fever. Love hands emoji. Please and thank you, you fucking salt of the earth fucking legend. Obviously the angels roll in to help. Lee Brown goes, Mongolian anything, not hot, just flavour. Did a big curry snacks last night. Ready by the time I got home from my Pilates and yoga classes. Well, guess what? Serena's son bloody loves the curry snags. And Lee always makes it extra and freezes in the Chinese containers. Okay? And Serene does the same, especially for him though. Him being hubby, obviously. It gives her a night off and she can eat what he doesn't like then. Since having our first baby five weeks ago, and hubby doing shift work, we have been utilizing the slow cooker a lot more. One of my go-to dishes is this chicken. It doesn't have a name that I'm aware of, but it's full of flavor and a crowd pleaser. Yeah, look, 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 look at these fucking angels, look. It looks good, by the way. Congratulations on the birth of your first baby and so good you're utilizing your slow cooker meals at this time. Congrats on the new family member. Hope that you're well and what a great recipe to share. Thank you and all the very best for the future. God, these fucking angels are gonna make me cry in a minute. Looks bloody delicious. Good on you. No, Jeff. No, Jeff. Not good on her. Good on you, mate. Good on fucking you. God bless you, Jeff. This is the kitchens of the internet. This is where life is happening, okay? And you know what? Yeah, all right. A lot of the recipes fucking stink. All right? A lot of these cunts can't seem to help posting, chucking a fucking kilo of dim sims with some master food sweet chili sauce in a wok. A lot of them fucking stink. But you know what else stinks? Life. Mate, life for the working class. Okay, a lot of fucking Pams and Maureen's out there aren't given the opportunity to tour around the world's culinary experiences, all right? A lot of fucking people out there are simply given a kilo of fucking dimmies and told we'll feed your fucking family. That's how it is. I'll never, I will not brook criticism of these angels, okay? 
these these are my true people all right not you them oh god what, where was i i was talking about something else wasn't i yeah that's right i was talking about my internet addiction i faded in my uh internet validation slot machine persona from the internet i faded back i don't need that shit anymore i still make the things that i care about uh but i faded but i think i lost something of a, a, a kind of a personal spark in fading back and that personal spark was the kind of thing that 10 years ago this year fueled me to begin creating video content as well as written content i used to have a blog called unguent and I used to really revel back then in like making weird n sort of yeah navel gazing back then, but also like detritus combing fucking weird shit. I used to like combing through literal alleys at rubbish. I used to review dead birds. Yeah, my health comes first here, and I don't. I worry about touching dead birds. I mean, just because you've reviewed about eleven or twelve of them doesn't mean that you can start fingering them, does it? Anyway. I just used to like to revel in detritus and filth and shit and, and weird corners of the internet and being weird. And that was all a really long time ago. But I guess the 10 year anniversary of that has got me asking myself questions. You know, I used to say to myself back in 2014, like, see how you go, just do things year by year, just keep doing, keep making ideas, keep doing things and see how you go every year and ask yourself where you're at in 10 years time. You know, and if you've made a life for yourself that allows you to do this kind of thing, do creative things, then 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 you can keep going, you know. And now I'm 10 years on and I, and I kind of have, but the questions that I want to ask myself are a little different. They're more like, are you allowing yourself to be weird? Have you let your desire for privacy, for getting off the internet, for not tilting at the social media validation machine, for not being a fucking maniac, for, for engaging with your political ideals, your political framework, for engaging in activism. Have you let that stuff eat your creativity alive? And I don't know the easy answer to that question, because to be honest with you, 10 years in, I get to walk among all these worlds. I have the privilege and the honour to do that because I have been able to be consistent and not let the ball down with lots of different people, not make a cunt out of myself. I get approached to do serious journalistic work sometimes, and I'm not a journalist. I get to engage with frontline activists of all different strands, and then after all that, I get to make weird shit, and people don't stop me from doing the serious work. That's a weird, rare position to be in, and I'm so grateful. But, yeah, a little bit, I feel that I've been cut off from the weirdness. I've cut myself off. I've let myself down. I've always been grateful for the little moments, though, the little uh, oases of, of stupidity, mirth, relief, that I've allowed myself to that. One thing comes to mind, it was in the middle of the the um countering the white nationalist movement i think and uh a mate let me on to a large facebook group an australian or kmart pie maker group kmart pie makers were all the rage back then with the uh mums and dads of australia lots of the kind of women who call their partner hubby in there and there was a sort of an unadorned positivity in that group that I thought was incredibly sweet and I suppose it was helping me because I was so fucking miserable. This was only a few months after the Christchurch massacre. It was a fucking tough time for so many different groups of people. Obviously, Muslim brothers and sisters around the world, particularly in Aotearoa. The families of the people who lost their lives were murdered by Brent and Tarrant. People in Aotearoa. So many different people, for many of us who were involved in frontline anti-fascism of one stripe or another, really fucking difficult time. So I don't know, maybe there was just something in the simple, unadorned joy and beauty of Sharon talking about how much hubby loved the egg and bacon pies that she lovingly crafted for him. You know, look at this. Tonight, finally used our pie maker. We made Shepherd's Pie Pies the wife and daughter smashed it down. The little one even licked her plate clean. And dessert made those perfect snowball cakes with jam and cream. Again, the wife and daughter licked the plate clean. 
couldn't even get in fast enough to take a photo. They were already licking, just fucking licking every plate in the house. That's how much they were happy, you know? Now you tell me, mate, it's 2019, you've got this and you've got Senator Fraser Anning. Which do you think would have made you happier? Kirsty says, Sounds delightful and tasty. Thanks for sharing and glad you enjoyed. And Tracy Lee goes, and this is so fucking beautiful, she goes, Memories are the best sometimes. Now, I read that in 2019, and I still say that to this day in 2024. Memories, Memories are, the, are best the best sometimes. sometimes. One of the sweetest sentences that you can say. I write a microfiction. Of course I did. I was a raging internet addict. I cry, and my tears fall into the little short crust pie base before me. A member of the Kmart Pie Maker Facebook group rushes to comfort me. Oh, Tom, they say. Don't cry, we're here to help. Are you stuck with the filling, the prep? Would you like our assistance with the best pastry to use for the pie lid? Why do you cry? I wipe my tears from my eyes and smile. It's none of that, Janet. It's just, I never knew that this would be what it takes to finally redeem Australia. Memories, Memories. replied Janet. Are, are the, the best, best sometimes. sometimes. Anyway, like so many of us with a fucking conscience, I'm fucking miserable lately. There's a genocide happening. We've all tried so hard. We continue to push. We continue to fight. But Jesus Christ, it's fucking misery making. So what do you do? What else do you do? You know, well, obviously you fight, you know, you fight and you keep pushing. But what else do you do? What do you do with all your fucking misery? You know what I mean? Well, look, I don't know about you, mate, but for me, I look at slow cooker groups on Facebook. And that is how I came across Kasim Saeed. All right? He's an admin in the Slow Cooking Australia Facebook group. And he's a, he's a fucking legend. I'm, I'm telling you. All right? Look at him. He's a fucking beauty. All right? Now, he's an admin and a founder of this group. Look at what Donna says there. Look there. She goes, the crock pot king is back. All right? You wouldn't say that unless someone had some fucking real, you know, slow cooking chops. This guy is the foundation, the backbone of this group. All right? And look, he's made a red skin fudge there. Makes me fucking sick, frankly. All right? Sorry. Bit of a negative note to start out on. Just saying. Just fucking nauseating. Don't ever make anything like that. But he's trying. He's constantly trying. When you're constantly trying, you know, and you've been doing it since 2021, admitting this group, being the fucking backbone of it, you're going to make some mistakes. Even the best of us, all right? He hasn't just done that. He's made everything. You don't understand. You think I'm exaggerating. No, Kasim Saeed has made every single dish that could conceivably be cooked in an Australian slow cooker. Every fucking day, Kasim is cooking, 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 cooking. He's posting, he's cooking, he's fucking slow cooking the fuck out of it. Desserts, treats for hubby, oh my god. Main meals, accompaniments, soup, kebab, silver side, carbonara. Big brekkies. He's putting liquids in there. He's making liquids. Pavlovas. Oh my God. Burritos. Soups. Where does it end? Breads he's making. It doesn't fucking end. Cacciatore. Stroganoff. Yeah, the fucking dimmies. Go the dimmies. Makes me sick. Go ahead. When you're going to make every meal, it follows you're going to make some bad ones. On and on it fucking goes. This man is the slow cooker king of Australia. Dropped into my sister's house this morning and left her a little surprise in her slow cooker for when she finishes work. She's just got to pop into the oven to finish it up. What the fuck? This guy, this fucking angel, is breaking and entering into loved ones homes to set their slow cooker up. It's not enough for Kasim that he's the slow cooker king of Australia. He wants everyone else in his life to participate in this. 
This is otherworldly generosity. Creamy garlic prawns, OMG, yum. He's making dog food in there. Kebabs, silver side. Partner wanted loaded potatoes. Fire up the slow cooker. Coconut ice fudge. Slow cooked toast, one and a half hours. See, didn't say he wasn't a cheeky bugger from time to time. Fucking pav, more silver side. Play-Doh, I don't even, just Play-Doh. Just an unending devotion to the slow cooker incredible stuff you know you you do see some odd comments under Kasim's um, uh, regular devotions you know like you must cook 400 different slow cooker meals a day or something and um, it's so crazy how in every recipe you make you have a different kind of slow cooker how many do you own I just I just I think you can't keep the negativity out of everywhere online you know, it's part of the human nature. So it follows that even in these little sort of domestic oases of humanity and 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 kindness, uh, you'll find a li you'll find a few haters. You know, but I love Kasim, and I thought I'd let him know. I said to him, "This is my personal account." I said, "Kasim, I've got to be honest with you here, mate. I think you're an all Australian slow cooking legend, and I think the services you've done to Australian slow cooking are timeless." I have a couple of questions. How many slow cookers have you been through on your way to slow cooking every recipe in Australia? You must have murdered a few. Two, what's hubby's favorite recipe of all time? And three, any advice for Aussie slow cooking newbies from the slow cook king? Now, he didn't actually answer me, which, you know, I've got to be honest with you, it hurt a bit. I said, hello? Hello, 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 Kasim. <laughs> Some random said to me, the slow cook king cannot be hasted, which I think, you know what? I'm inclined to agree with, but like, you can fucking slow cook, we all know that, and talk too. Frankly, I thought it would have been really cool if we could have had a chat and it could have included it in, in this video. Do you know what I mean? But he didn't. So he got me, he got me thinking and he got me dwelling, you know? For example, and this is under that red skin fudge abomination I showed you earlier on, Carly Jane goes, red skins aren't even made anymore. And I thought, oh yeah, that's right. They've been existed for years. Why is he saying you made red skin fudge for then? And then Jody says, well, you didn't make it, but great pics from years ago. And I'm like, what do you mean, mate? Are these pics taken from elsewhere? Surely not. And she, someone else comes in and goes, 2019, laughter emoji. And there it is. I'm like, hang on, I've got to check this myself. Okay, so I'm going to search for red skin fudge. Yep. And check in the group. Okay, yep, no, that's it. That's the 28th of March. That's the... Wait, what? 22nd of September, 2023. I made red skin fudge today. Not bad, yummo. Because it, 4th of February, I made red skin fudge today, not bad, yum -o. 2022, I made red skin fudge today, not bad, yum -o. What the fuck is going on here? It was only then that I received an anonymous tip off. Well, I've been a part of the group for many years. I feel like he and a few others hijacked the group. He posts multiple posts every day about slow-cooked meals he supposedly made himself. I have tried a few and they weren't good. But I do see the same posts from other slow-cooker groups with the same dialogue, posted by someone that actually made it dot 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 that he copies and claims he made himself. It was at that point that I recalled that Kasim is often redirecting people to a website called slowcookertip.com. Slowcookertip.com is absolutely lined with ads. As soon as you hit the main menu, you get the ads at the bottom. Go into an individual recipe, you get a sidebar and a top bar with more ads. Clearly, this is someone's at-home ad revenue raising scheme. However, none of that is to say that Kasim isn't an all Aussie slow cooking hero. Or so I thought. Kasim is also often sharing into the group posts from this page which often replicate his own as we saw before with the fudge leading me to assume that he manages this page. 
Qasim's Facebook page has 1.2 million followers. Every time it shares a picture or an idea for a slow cooked meal, it directs people through to slowcookertip.com. The page was created on the 30th of November 2018 and the page transparency details tell me that the primary country or region and location for people who manage this page is Pakistan. It is at this point that I begin to panic and almost as if operating by intuition, I start searching for other groups. I locate Slow Cooker Recipes Australia, 500,000 members, Kasim is an admin. Pot Slow Cooker Recipes and Tips official group, 1.2 million members, Kasim is the admin. Slow Cooking UK, 442,000 members, Kasim is the admin. Slow Cooker Tips UK, 172,000 members, Kasim is the admin. It's only then, as the blood drains from my face, that I realise I've just uncovered an international scheme orchestrated by Kasim Saeed to steal slow cooking recipes from around the world and dump them into a coordinated global network of Facebook pages and groups which only pretend to come from Australia or the UK or any one of a number of other countries. In reality, the entire scheme is meant to siphon ad revenue back to Kasim and Pakistan. This is it. This is the big one. This is the pelican brief of Facebook slow cooking groups and I'm the one who's uncovered it and I take my findings straight back to Kasim. I say to him, fucking cheek on this guy making me think that he's the Aussie slow cook king. He's fucking not. He's not even from Australia. How could he fucking do this to me? How the fuck could he do this? I think that he can fucking go away with it. Then I stop and I think, oh, actually, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's actually pretty cool. And I hope he's making a lot of money from it. Besides, it made me think of a few choice words that Kasim, the man himself, had for any haters in his group spaces only a few days ago. Here's what he said. He said, In this group, we do not stand for any nasty comments, whatever the case may be. We do not stand for swearing. We do not stand for people picking on others for the sake of it. We as a group need to support one another especially in a time like what we are facing currently. Look at this bloody angel that comes into the comments. Dear old Suzanne, she goes, why would anyone be nasty? It's for slow cooking. Here we go, here we go. Sorry to hear that some people don't like anything. What a beautiful, heartbreaking line. Gets to the fucking heart of it, doesn't it, you know? Cuts away all the bullshit. At the end of the day, that's what I am, you know? And regards all the ills of the world. I, I am also sorry to hear that some people don't like anything. But I couldn't put it any better than Kasim, who said down the bottom, you know, Suzanne, we're very glad to hear. Fucking oath we are. Actually, there was another um, comment uh, from an old lady called Pearl who was asking why... Kasim had removed her comment under a goat recipe saying, Don't goats are satanic. And cooking one is signaling to satanic. Regards, Pearl. Um, but you know what? I, I'm I'm with Kasim on that one. I think I think that's a bit of an odd comment. So you've got to draw the line somewhere. Even in a beautiful slow cooking space, some people have to be told to fuck up.